Hey everybody, Dr. A here, and in this video, we're going to be exploring an example of computing the vertical stress caused by a line load acting at the ground surface. So let's go ahead and get started. In the given uh, section of the example, we're being, set, we're being asked to compute the stress at point A due to the applied wall load on the ground surface. So here we have a 3D figure, and this is not my best artwork, so please forgive me. But in this uh, figure, we have this 3D wall that has a very long length, okay? We're gonna assume it's a very, very long wall, and we're gonna assume that it can keep going in in uh, both directions. So for example, we can assume it keeps extending in this direction and back in this direction. And it is transmitting an intensity of 120 pounds per linear foot or PLF to the ground surface. Now the point A we're interested in is four feet below the ground surface. So that uh, gives you a Z value of four feet. And it is five feet away from the center line of the wall. So this is all given information. Now, what I like to do under the solution is to maybe redraw a two-dimensional figure first to help us visualize what's going on a little bit better. So here I'm going to show our ground surface. And I'm going to show the line load right here. This is Q equals 120 PLF. And in this two-dimensional view, what direction is that line load extending? Well, it's extending in and out of the screen at us, okay? And the point A we're interested in is somewhere over here, point A, and it is four feet below the ground surface, and it is five feet away from where from the line of action of where the load is being applied so x equals five feet and z equals four feet and so what we want here is if we zoom in on on this little uh this little element a and we zoom in on it here then what we're interested in is the stress And this is supposed to be a uniform stress, but the stress at point A, and we're going to call that sigma sub Z because we, we calculate it at a depth Z, which is where point A is, okay? And so that's this, again, this little figure here is just a, a very zoomed in view of point A. And again, we're looking at the stress at that point A, okay? And so we're going to say sigma sub Z equals... 2QZ to the third power, all divided by pi times x squared plus z squared, and then that quantity is squared. So if we substitute in our values, we're going to have 2 times 120 pounds per linear foot times the depth uh, of 4 feet cubed. And then all divided by pi, open parentheses, and we're going to say 4 feet squared. Oh, I'm sorry. Just let's be, let's be more organized. X is uh, 5 feet, so we're going to say 5 feet squared plus uh, 4 feet squared. That wouldn't have made a difference in our calculations, but we just want to be organized. And then square all of that. So let's go ahead and punch this through. We're going to say four. I'm using my TI-36X Pro calculator right now times 120 times two. So you punch this along with me and we're going to divide all that by, let's see, 25 plus 16 quantity squared and I get um, 2.91 PSF okay now let's make sure that these units make sense so we're gonna do a quick unit check here and I encourage you to always do these unit checks uh, to make sure that your units are all making sense so 
um, the Q value, we're, so we're only looking at units, the Q value has units of pounds per foot, okay? And then the Z value has units of feet, but we're cubing that. And then the pi doesn't have units. The X has units of feet, but we're squaring that. So we'll have feet squared plus uh, Z squared is another feet squared. And then all of that is squared. So let's go ahead and combine some of these together. This numerator is going to combine as pounds times feet squared because we can see that that uh, this feet cancels with two of the with a uh, one of those leaving a two there and then we're going to divide by now when you say feet squared plus feet squared let's be careful with our parentheses here when you say feet squared plus feet squared that's still feet squared and then you're squaring it right here on the outside of the bracket so this becomes uh, feet to the fourth power and so of course you can see that this feet squared cancels with two of these leaving feet squared and so you ultimately end up with pounds per feet squared which is a PSF so always do these unit checks it should all work out if you if you mind your units and that concludes this video if you found this helpful please hit like and subscribe